Hello friends, once again welcome back to Alchemy Academy platform. So in this video, I'll discuss about effect of operating variables on NHT process. So what are the operating variables which are present, which actually affect the naphtha hydro trading process. So these are few operating variables that actually determines the how much pressure or temperature that we need to keep on the NHT reactor in, our, in order to get a proper hydro trading. So these are the parameters. Uh, reactor pressure, reactor temperature, feed quality, feed rate, recycle gas rate, hydrogen to hydrocarbon ratio, then catalyst aging and poisons. So effect of reactor pressure and effect of reactor temperature. These two parameters I had already discussed in my previous tutorial. The link of that video I'll give it into my description box. From there you can watch it. Now in this lesson basically I'll focus on this topic. Effect of feed quality. So what will happen if feed quality is getting changed on the naphtha hydro trading process so how will first of all how will we will get to know that uh, that whether the field quality is getting changed so there there are some parameters that actually tells that your feed quality is getting changed so these are the few parameters so feed quality basically whether we are going to process srn or crn srn basically straight run naphtha that we get from the cdu video column cdu column directly from the top top uh, top product. CRN basically is the cracked run naphtha that we get from the FCC unit. So whether you are going to process SRN or CRN. So if you are going to SRN then operating conditions of naphtha hydro trading reactor will be different. If you are going to process CRN then the uh, NHT operating uh, conditions will, would be dif uh, different. And similarly effect of high sulfur or low sulfur naphtha whether you are going to process then distillation. What is the distillation? range of the naphtha that you are going to process then the how much api gravity is there and how it is affecting then eopk then sulfur content how much nitrogen content what is the bromine number of that naphtha you are going to process then condensing carbon how much is there basically this is this uh, residue carbon how much is there after getting the destructive dist uh, distillation then stm color how much is there or metal content how much is there in your naphtha that you are going to process so these are the parameters that will uh, study one by one and how it is affecting the naphtha hydrotating process operating conditions okay uh, here i'm not going to discuss much details regarding the naphtha hydrotating process or overview of nht unit because the i had already explained one uh, overview video and the link of that video i'll give it into my other it into my description box so basically i'll just in order to summarize i'll tell naphtha hydro treating uh, the main purpose of naphtha hydro treating process is to hydro treat basically is to remove the impurities which are present in the naphtha basic impurities that are present in the naphtha are in the form of sulfur organic sulfur and organic nitrogen so these are the six basic uh, you know impurities that basically present or reactions that happen into the naphtha hydro treating uh, reactor you can read it so Again, I'm telling the process description. I'm not going to explain. I'll explain basically this topic will cover mainly on the feed quality. So let's come back to this topic. Uh, this is the naphtha hydro treating. Uh, this is the process flow diagram. So I, uh, I would like to say just a brief uh, 30 second or one minute. Uh, what will happen in this uh, PFD? Then again, go back to this topic because uh, you'll be able to relate if I'll little bit if I'll explain it here. So this is the naphtha rotating will get a liquid feed from the feed pump. It goes to command free exchanger, then through the charge heater, then it comes to the NHT reactor. But this liquid feed directly will not come here in the NHT reactor. Here this hydrotating reaction will happen in the presence of hydrogen. So this is a recycle gas we send it and before the combined heat exchanger, recycle gas combined with the liquid feed, both together gets heated in the combined feed exchanger, then temperatures become around 294 degrees Celsius, then it goes into the charge heater and this temperature rise will be around 337 degrees Celsius and the pressure around the 42 kg. So this temperature and pressure, how it is getting uh, at this temperature and pressure, this reactions will happen. So my point is there whether if we are going to change the feed quality, feed quality, whether this operating temperature or pressure is going to be the same or you going to the change this based on the feed quality. So definitely we are going to change whether if we are processing the CRN then this temperature and pressure would be much higher as compared to if we are going to process the SRN. So those changes I am going to discuss in this video. So definitely if you are going to change the feed quality then definitely your operating conditions of the naphtha hydro trading reactor will change. If there is a slight change then every day we don't 
change this operating temperature and pressure but there is a drastic change or any other type of crude we are starting processing and and the naphtha we are getting from that drastic changes there then definitely we have to change the operating conditions of naphtha rotating reactor so let's come back to the topic this uh effect of feed quality and type so one by one i'll discuss now here i'll focus on the srn or crn so for srn you can see it here for straight run naphtha desulfurization around 25 to 35 kg per centimeter reactor pressure is normally used but design pressure can be higher if nitrogen or sulfur contents are higher than the normal so srn basically straight run naphtha naphtha basically major com components of naphtha basically c5 c6 and c7 major component is c6 component and hexane you can say and hexane and hexane means you know there is a single single of six carbon chains so if this this is the component the naphtha rotating in it normal pressure be cube around 25 to 35 kg but again if the part of that in that also double bonds metals are there and then this temperature pressure temperature and pressure will change so straight run naphtha basically be uh, keep at a desulfurization will start at a lower pressure only but if we are going to process cracked run naphtha so cracked run naphtha what will happen how do we get this cracked run naphtha in fcc we are processing the hvgo uh, or lvgo in the fcc in order to uh, upgrade the uh, value addition we do, do. suppose L lvgo or hvgo we process hvgo we process in fcc unit fcc unit will get from different useful products lpg will get crn will get off gas will get diesel will get and fuel will get so one component that will get is crn cracked run naphtha so basically it because we are processing heaviest so crn will contain more amount of the you know the double bonds and all and uh, olefin content will be more in this and aromatic slightly will be more more in this then the, this crn will contain more nitrogen and sulfur so in order to remove uh, more nitrogen and sulfur in the nst reactor because severity of reaction will be more so in order to remove complete uh, you know uh, nitrogen sulfur from this crn we have to operate the uh nst reactor at the high temperature and pressure and that high temperature and pressure would be around 50 to 55 kg per centimeter square reactor pressure normally we keep correct so because the severity of reaction will increase if we are going to process the crn so normal reactor design temperature for both crn and srn will operate around 395 to 400 degree celsius so this is the maximum we operate minimum will be lower side and again the operating uh, temperature will vary depend upon the feed type from 290 to 380 degree celsius what i told here we are processing here 337 42 kg so we are going to process here and this temperature would be higher will keep higher pressure and this temperature will also will keep it higher if we are going to process here and if we are going to process uh, srn then it can be lower around 42 or 335 337 degree celsius so this is the effect of the feed quality whether you are going to provide uh, you know srn you are going to feed or crn so this is how operating conditions are getting change similarly high sulfur or low sulfur naphtha you are going to process so similarly high sulfur basically in crn also i told crn will carries more high sulfur and more nitrogen and srn will contain slightly less sulfur content content and nitrogen so this sulfur content definitely if higher sulfur content is there then it increases the operating severity and the increase hydrogen consumption because if more amount of nitrogen or sulfur will be there in your uh, your naphtha before the hydrotating definitely hydrogen consumption will be more so severity of the reaction will be no so this is how we are going to change uh, we are changing the naphtha hydrotating you know conditions so how much pressure we keep always depend on the what a what type of feed we are going to process if the feed contains high sulfur nitrogen or sulfur contains then the design pressure can be higher so this is how uh, your nst reactor operating conditions is getting changed based on the how much sulfur or nitrogen you are containing in your naphtha feed so now i'll discuss about the distillation range so how much uh, you know the naphtha you are going to process how much is, uh, is its distillation range distillation range means what is its ibp and how what is its fbp ibp means initial boiling point or fbp means final fbp final boiling 
point so what is its range based on based on that nst naphtha hydro treater treater reactor operating conditions will be fixed so it is design is based on the type of type of feed we are going to process and its end point whether it is uh, srn or hu naphtha we are going to process or hu light naphtha or hu naphtha heavy naphtha we are going to process or crn we are going to process so based on its fvp uh, we are going to fix uh, naphtha hydro treating uh, operating conditions inlet temperature and the pressure so what will happen can question here should be what will happen if the end point increases correct so normally end point of srn would be around 158 degrees so suppose is this end point is going to increase we are doing distillation and from the cdu video that srn you are getting is end point increases to bend to 165 or 170 what will happen in that case so increase in the end point of the feed will make sulfur and nitrogen removal more difficult thus requiring higher reactor temperature with more coke diffusion so what will happen severity of the reaction will be because carry over of the sulfur and nitrogen compound will be more at the higher tem higher temperature heaviest will lift up so along with the heaviest your sulfur and nitrogen compounds will also lift up so more hydrogen nitrogen and sulfur compound will be there so it would can uh, during hydro treating, treating process it will contain more hydrogen consumption so in order to remove those uh, uh, sulfur and nitrogen impurities from that feed it requires the you have to operate the nst reactor have the higher temperature and slightly lower temperature but if you are going to process this uh, feed at the higher temperature then your severity of the reaction will increase then your coke formation will increase that will lead to the deactivation of your cat catalyst as to and reduce the cycle length so high boiling fractions also contains increased quantity of metals which lead to reactor bed pressure drop and also high boiling fractions will definitely take up the slightly increase increase the metal quantity and which also led to the high reactor pressure drop and rapid catalyst deactivation so this is also one of the reasons so that's why we have to keep monitoring how much fbp is there so you are when naphtha hydro treating process going on or nst reactor in practically you are operating then you have to keep monitoring you have to send it the sample on continuous and keep checking so uh, as of now in this video this three topics i had covered srn or crn high sulfur or low sulfur naphtha what we are going to process and what is the distillation range so this video is going to become like this so ultra what i'll do uh, i'll finish this video now only in my next video i'll discuss about this pending topic so next video i'll discuss api gravity upk you can see api gravity what is it and how it is affecting then upk so these topics i'll discuss into my next video so guys uh, thank you thank you so much if you have any doubt regarding this video lesson you can comment into the comment box i'll try to reply as soon as possible or uh, one more thing if you want to know something else apart from this video you can comment in the comment box i'll try to come with the new video for your query so guys thank you thank you so much if you do like this video please hit like and give a comment for your feedback thank you thank you so much